This week on the Digital Marketing Scoop, we're talking with Neil O'Brien all about finding great ideas for your written content. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Digital Marketing Scoop. This week we're joined by Neil O'Brien. Neil, very welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Mark and Jen. Delighted to be on here with you guys. I've been following you for quite a while, so <laughs> like, uh, I'm very privileged to be invited along. That's Thank me you. pushing it down your face every week. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Great, great stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Neil, if you would, just, just for everyone listening, just tell us a bit about yourself and your business. Sure, yeah. Uh, I, there's a couple of aspects to it. I run mastermind groups, uh, as you know, Mark. Yeah. I run a couple of mastermind groups, and I also have a consulting arm. And the whole focus, really, of what I do working with businesses is to help them grow their profits, uh, understand their business a bit better, where, where are the profit levers, the things that can be changed to grow the profits, not just the sales, but the profits. So that's a big part of my focus. Uh, my background is actually accounting, management accounting. Went to college in the CIT, uh, spent a few years in London, went out to Florida, and then came back to Ireland. So um, most of my life has been in Cork, really. Um, a few hobbies, do a bit of golf and a bit of hill walking uh, when we're allowed. Um, so looking forward to getting back to those now in, in the near future. Any hills within two kilometres now? <laughs> no. Well, small ones. Very <laughs> small ones. I find my complaint is, is that there's only hills within a two kilometre range. Oh, really? <laughs> well, good, good, good exercise, Jen. Good hill. Good exercise. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Neil, I suppose we're, today we're, we're going to chat around kind of... Um, you know, how to come up with ideas maybe for like blog posts, LinkedIn posts, your email marketing, that kind of side of things. Yeah. Um, we've actually written a, a book as well. And a I part of that, I give it a plug, done. give it a plug. Yeah. <laughs> 101 business lessons from a recovering accountant. Uh, and it's interesting, actually, Mark, you mentioned that because that book is a collection of blogs. That's how I wrote it. So I didn't sit down and write it from scratch. I'd written about 300 blogs over... Uh, six-year period so I just went in and picked out 101 of what I thought were the better ones and put them into categories and that's how the book came about so it's kind of a, a lazy way of writing the book in one it's way brilliant though it's a great way of reusing your content to actually yeah. create a, 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 a physical product like a book out of it like yeah it's brilliant yeah, yeah. um so in terms I suppose of you know a lot of people they'll have for their businesses they'll they'll have you know, great ideas of maybe what they think their customers should know or what their customers should hear. But then when it comes to, or even educating their customers, when it comes down to sitting down in front of the keyboard, yeah, starting to write that first blog post, that first LinkedIn article, that first email news or whatever it is, you know, it's yeah. just complete blank, don't know what to do, where do I start? Any kind of tips for people, how to, how, what's the best way to get started in writing? Yeah, um, absolutely. Mark. And I think it's the, and you're, it's interesting you say that because it's the biggest challenge I hear from people. Uh, is what do I write about? And just like you're saying, so the way I've approached it, I might just give you the background because that will help answer the question. Anyway, is cool. that going back about 10 years ago, I was, you know, you probably get emails from different people and I signed up to this email from this guy called John McCulloch. He's a marketing consultant. He's an English guy. He lives down in West Cork. <clears throat> and the next thing I realized that he's going to send out an email every day. And I was kind of going, what can somebody be writing about every day? I thought it was mad. But then when I started getting the emails, I realized that what he was writing about was just everyday events, okay? He, he, he loved dogs. He lived on this big old sprawling farmhouse, okay? He would write about the dogs. He would go cycling every day. He would just write about what happened. He worked as a bouncer years ago. He would write about that. Um, and it was what they call edutainment. So it's just everyday events, but you do try and build a little a little tip in at the end of it. Um, I suppose from getting emails like that, I, when I started writing them, that was the approach I took. So it's a bit different, but uh, I think it works really well because it's interesting content and you're also getting a message across. So that's my advice to people. And I have I have run courses on this for the local enterprise offices. I've helped some people get up and running with this. And I'd say, write about everyday events, write about your hobbies, write about, look at all the great content we have at the moment with self-isolation and everything else. But then people are being so helpful and, and you know, there's really spirit of community out there. So write about everyday events. Um, that's my approach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's really good because, as well because I actually find that 
a lot of people think that the every everyday things that they're doing are a little bit too mundane to write about or create content around or even in their day to day job like a lot of things that people would do on a daily basis yeah. and they consider a little bit maybe too boring to write or put out but actually that's the point of interest for someone else as well yeah yeah so that's that's the approach i've taken and um it look it works really really well i've, I've got a lot of um i attracted at one stage from blogs and emails that i got about um a 30 uh, about four years in a row i got i could trace about between 30 and 40 percent of my business came directly just from emailing and blogging and uh builds up it can really strengthen relationships with people and um it's just a brilliant way of approaching it good. and do, do you have any kind of tips for for tying i suppose the it's very difficult because it's, it's based on every, everybody's business is different but for tying we'll say kind of the everyday message or the everyday activity um into a message that you want to deliver, whether it be for an educational purpose, a sales purpose, whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, and that is probably one day, that is one of the things I found took a little bit of time. Sometimes there's an obvious link, other times there's not. Um, and I suppose the best example, the best advice I can give there, Mark, if somebody isn't writing at the moment, is just to start. And like anything, the writing will get better. You'll be you'll be spotting the links. And like I'll give you one example is um, one of the early ones I wrote. I mean about the dog, if you have a dog, okay, or a cat, or a pet, write about it, especially a dog, okay, because people absolutely love those emails. So when I started in the early days, I'd be walking Rocky, and, you know, even though it was Jack Russell, he was quite quick, like, he was half blind, so, like, he, he never seemed to catch a rabbit, you know, um, and I don't know what I'd have done if he did, like, but anyway, he, um, so I'd write about Rocky, and, but one day he ran off anyway, and he was, I thought he was getting the hang of chasing the rabbits. But well, the next thing I found him, he was at the base of a tree, and there was a squirrel, you know, halfway up the tree. So he was after chasing a squirrel. So I said, this is a good story, but how do I build in a business tip? So I just thought about it for a little while, and I said, the, the squirrel wasn't Rocky's target market. So it was like, <laughs> okay, it. so you tell the story, and then say, you know, he was going after the wrong target market. Are you doing the same? And the lesson is, in, you know, in marketing, as you'd know, you need to be very clear in your target market. So what I found was that I got into the routine of writing. I was right, um, believe it or not, I was right, uh, five emails a day. So what I do is I'd write it at five o'clock. And so I knew that I was writing one at five o'clock. So I found that as I went through my day, I was looking for little stories or little things. So once I had a nugget of a, an idea, um, then I would be just in my head, I'd be kind of just putting it together, the skeleton of the blog, and then I would also think about the link. And I found once I got into it, um, it comes quickly enough. Um, the link from the story to the actual business tip. Yeah. And it's important to do it that way, but sometimes people just write lovely stories. Like at the moment, I don't think there's anything wrong with writing a nice blog or email, and it's just something nice you read about online, how people are helping, people are going out of their way. You know, they're nice stories to, to read at the moment. And I think at the moment, it's fine to, to write stories like that. And, you know, it doesn't have to be any major link to, it, to the business. 100% people, people are craving for, for content. And it also puts a, a human side to your business as well, as opposed to, especially if you're a bigger company, it's, you know, it's yeah. instead of a more kind of corporate side. Yeah. And that's the thing, there's so many good news stories as well at the moment. I mean, even on a localized basis, I mean, over the last few weeks, especially in the podcast and stuff, they've come up and there, there's constantly stuff happening. And it's, it's a great way to engage with other business as well, just kind of connect with them and saying, I love what you're doing. I'm going to write this piece about it and, and start yeah. rolling things out from there as well. Yeah. And, you know, um, I suppose, and I realize there's a bit of resistance to writing blogs. Sometimes people are going, I don't know what to write about or how do I do it? Um, what I'd encourage people to do is just just commit to doing, even if it's one a month or one a week or whatever it is, just commit to doing something, even if it's one a week. And what I found is once I started, like I had about 300 people on an email list and I was a bit apprehensive at the start. And once I started sending the emails and there were those entertaining ones, what I found very quickly was that I was getting really positive feedback from people. So they say, I love that story or... Some people would say, you know, I'm working from home and I, I read your story in the morning and it, you know, motivates me or, you know, it gives me a smile, whatever. Very quickly, I started getting feedback, 
positive feedback from people. And that completely, I suppose, gave me the confidence to keep, um, keep doing it. So if, you know, people are feeling apprehensive about doing it, uh, the best advice I can give is just commit to doing, you know, do, do one a week for the next few, four weeks or something and, and just see how it goes. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, when I look back at my early blogs <clears throat> compared to the later ones, I can see the writing was, you know, I, it's like chalk and cheese. But I mean, the only way I got good was by starting and maybe they weren't, they were okay. Um, but my writing improved over time, but it only improved by doing it. So I definitely encourage people. And if you're wondering what to write about, just look around you, look at the news. Um, I was thinking like, Jen, if you, you know, if you're chatting to one of your friends about what you did at the weekend, uh, even go back, say a couple of months ago, you know, I'm sure you'd be talking about maybe restaurants or movies. You go for a spin, you know, or they into hill walking, have their hobbies, whatever you do at the weekend, there has, there's content in there. Yeah. And you can write about it. And one thing, sure. I, one thing I find interesting there is what you said, the feedback from the emails was nice. And one thing we're constantly preaching on social media is, you know, don't, don't be selling to people, try and, you know, help educate or entertain them. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's for some reason, I think when it comes to written content, we we'll, a lot of people actually get more salesy almost. Yeah. Um, whereas yeah. I think that's, that's great advice to take, you know, the stories from your day or any type of stories um, and make that and turn them into to helpful educational or entertaining content for the reader. You can still have yeah. a message in there. You can still have, you know, whatever, whatever needs to be in there for your business. But it is, it is the fact that people don't really like being sold to. So at, at least this way you're, you're, you're doing it in such a way that it's entertaining them. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And the other thing there that you mentioned as well that I think is quite important is that you mentioned kind of consistency and kind of yeah. uh, doing it on a regular basis. Like I think that once you get a routine, if you can only dedicate yourself to one blog every two weeks, just do one blog every two weeks. Yeah. And stick <clears throat> Because in six weeks time you've got three blogs um whereas before you had zero so and keeping that up as well is really we found that really beneficial with the podcast as well is that the it wasn't that we were doing it and had say 20 episodes out that was mm. key it was actually that when we started hitting earlier this year uh, almost a year on we that's the consistency there is what helped us really grow in the last few weeks yeah and like you can build you can build a really strong relationship with your existing clients and with new people when you're emailing when you're getting content out there and it's this story style you know story style message or blog or whatever what i found was that after a couple of months i just built a really strong relationship with people and it got to the stage where i remember going on holidays i started writing emails in may i think it was 2012 and i went in holidays so i was doing a few a week and i went on holidays and I think I went on holidays in June for a week and I, you know, you can put into the autoresponder. So I put two of them in, I wrote them and put them in so people still got them. And then in August, I didn't have time because I was busy before I went. So I didn't have any emails. So there was a week when there was no emails going out and people had gotten used to getting them. And the next thing I started getting emails from people, are you okay? Are you sick? You know, <laughs> it was like, oh my God. It's like people were missing, um, people were missing the content. They got into the habit of getting them and, like I used Aweber at one stage, you know, there's different software products you can use for email and MailChimp. And you can see the open, you can see who opens it and you can see the open rates. And what I realized after a while is that, you know, some people would open an email or they five or six times or they'd share it with people. So you can build a very strong relationship with people and they almost feel like they get to know you um, yeah. before they even meet you. I mean, people still... I was in a committee meeting there recently and we were just leaving and some guy said to me, um, how's Rocky? And like, I look at him going, like this guy doesn't live near me or whatever. It, took, it takes a few seconds to register. Sometimes he got my emails like years ago and he still remembers Rocky and how is he getting on with the rabbits? You know, like, <laughs> like I still get comments like that all the time and it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, just one story I'll tell you to illustrate the point about building a relationship. It was a, a few years back I started writing to I had a, an email list of accountants. So I was sending a couple of emails a week. And I was doing this now a couple of months. And I suppose, you know, what you're meant to do with emails is this, there's a call to action. So you want people to, you know, you might have a link to a product or a course or something. So I just had a, after a couple of months, I had a call to action to, for a free ebook for accountants. 
and about six people clicked on the link. So then I, the following week, I said I'll phone them. So I was phoning this accountant and he's living like way up the country. I'd never met him or, or spoke to him before and I'm ringing him in, and you're kind of wondering, will I get through to him? You know, will he take my call? So this guy comes on the phone, let's call him John. You know, he goes, oh, hi, Neil, how are you? And I said, grand, like, so he's very warm. And he's chatting away, like, he's chatting away as if, like, we know each other. And then he says to me, how's Rocky? You know? And I'm kind of going, oh, oh he's, he's fine, you know? And he starts telling me then that his wife um, is a cat person, but he loves dogs, but she won't let him get a dog. And, like, I'm kind of going, like, I never even met this guy before. And, like, through the emails and the blogs, I built a relationship with him. And, he, like, he felt like he knew me. And, like, he felt, I felt like he... he it felt like he'd met Rocky, you know, he'd been a walk in Rocky, Rocky and me, like he was kind of like, it was just an amazing example of how powerful it can be when you're writing content and you're getting it out there and it's everyday stuff that people, you know, he could relate to that. He could relate to Rocky not catching a rabbit and, you know, all that stuff. So it was an amazing example of how powerful it can be. That's, that's a really good point as well, that it's relatable. I think as well, you know, and a lot of marketing speak and sales pitches and all that, you don't, you don't, you don't have that connection because it's not relatable. Um, so when you're, you're talking about the everyday that everybody can understand and everybody can relate to it, it helps massively in forming a connection with someone. Yeah. And I mean, you probably get those newsletters. Anybody listening to this you, you, yourselves, you probably get newsletters from people, do you? You know, these professional newsletters with five or six sections, how wonderful we are and here's our new service and all that. Like, I mean, do you, uh, whoever reads those? Like, no, nah. <laughs> you know? oh, There's actually one that I got recently um, from Louis Gonier. He's, uh, he, he does a podcast called Everyone Hates Marketers. It's very, very good. Like that, <laughs> he very rarely sends out an email, but when he does, it's jam-packed full of really, really good resources. I actually think, Mark, I sent you one of the articles there last week from it. And it's just so good because he says nothing about listening to the podcast. He does absolutely nothing to do with that whatsoever. He's just like, here's 10 things that will help you this week, especially the last few weeks, given everything going on. And I've just found them really, really good. Yeah. But like that, he's targeting valuable information to the right people. I feel like I know him. The poor guy has never met me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like that, I've, I, I listen to the podcast all the time, even though he's never kind of directly salesy kind of gone, listen to the podcast you have to listen to the podcast to learn everything do you know what i mean yeah yeah that's yeah. really interesting and i know you sent me on a few questions as well one of the things you were asking about was maybe a conservative brand you know was that one of the ones you were saying jen about you know if somebody has a, a brand that's maybe seen as conservative then they might think that oh you know people won't want to hear from me or is that that was one of the questions you had i think was it yeah, yeah. So one of those those things is that a lot of the time people who feel like they're in a conservative brand space, I guess, like yeah, an accountancy could actually be one of those examples where people yeah. feel like they have to be so reserved and so professional yeah. that sometimes they don't see where that link could be to personal content or engaging in a more personal way with people. Do you yeah. have any recommendations around that for kind of businesses who are who are trying to toe that line, I guess, between professional and personal but also want their business to have a little bit of personality yeah um it's probably the same like i was looking at the questions you sent me on and, and the almost i the answer i came up to most of them was the same anyway about the just write about the everyday um life stuff and i've actually two good examples is um uh, ted ted Ware is um he's with city life who are pensions who will be seen as a kind of conservative business but ted used to write blogs um on linkedin on his website on linkedin and like there were great stories. He'd write about golf and fly fishing down in Kerry and all this. And like, um, like there were, I think there were the stories. There wasn't any business tip, but I remember those and I read them, you know, now I get brochures through the poster every month or every couple of months from this, um, pensions company. And like, they go straight in the bin. Okay. Because they're all salesy and what, what did the market do this week? And I had no interest in reading about that. Okay. But Ted wrote stories, and I remember those and I wrote them. And, you know, sorry, I read them and I remember these great stories. And another guy is Flora McCarthy, who's a solicitor in Clonakilty. Now, you would think, you know, if you were to pick somebody as a good, you know, a good circumstances for sending emails, you wouldn't think a solicitor in West Cork. Would you? <laughs> Yet Flora, now going back about 
seven or eight years ago, Flora started because he, he knew John McCulloch as well. So John McCulloch, he, he could see John McCulloch the way they worked for John sending the, the story ones. So Flora started sending emails. I can't remember the frequency, but it, it could certainly a few week emails and blogs. And it was just about, you know, growing up in West Cork and from a farm and he read about his grandparents and what he did in summertime, swimming and playing sport and all this. And remember Flor saying after a few months, he just found like it, it had a big impact on his business because he was, he was, you know, he was sending content out. He was connecting with clients and a solicitor. You might only see people every year or two because it's, well, you know, hopefully most of us don't need a solicitor that often. So like he have all these probably hundreds of clients that you might not have a lot of contact with. And Flora started sending these stories and it had a huge positive impact on his business because he was reconnecting with clients. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, conservative businesses, there's two of them, pensions and solicitors, and it worked really well for them. And I always think it's even more powerful because you look at, like we'll say, in the marketing industry, for example, where everybody's trying to come up with every idea to put themselves out there. But yeah. uh, when you're in an industry where nobody's doing anything and where everybody's really <laughs> reserved, as soon as you yeah. do something, you stand out an awful lot. Yeah, absolutely. And account- I know accountants who do it as well and do it really well. And like, I know that, I suppose, that, again, an objection a lot of people will have, even if they're saying, okay, I could write about everyday stuff, is that I can't write. You know, people say, oh, I can't write, you know, um, how am I going to do this? But if you think about it, if you're taking this approach of, of telling stories, you know, if you, if you met a friend for coffee or, you know, if you're out with a bunch of friends sometimes and somebody says something like, oh, you know, I had a really bad meal there last weekend. And then people will pipe in, oh, wait till I tell you my, wait till I tell you my story. And, you know, this happened to me. Most of us have lots of stories. So we have the stories if we just stop and think about it. And the writing is, once, once you have a story, you just write about the story. You don't have to... You don't have to think about start with a blank sheet of paper and say, what am I going to write about? Oh, I'm going to write, we were out at the weekend, we had a bad meal or a rude waitress. You know, I'm going to write about that. Um, or we had a lovely spin in the countryside or whatever it is. You know, once you have the story, I think it makes it much easier to write. Um, and I actually have, I, I can send you on a list. I, I was just looking through some of my notes earlier on because I used to run courses on this before and I came up with about 28 different topics you can write about you know and it's just everyday stuff it's hobbies it's the weekend it's sport it's something silly you did and once you get into this i know some email marketers say like nothing bad ever happens in an email marketer because even if you do something and screw up well you can write about it you know um if you want to you know um, I'll take that motto back to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I wouldn't, I wouldn't apply D at all. But like, you know, we're all human, okay? Um, we're, there's no businesses dealing with businesses. It's people communicating with people. That's what it is. And we're not that different when it comes down to it. We all have, you know, ambitions and fears and we have hobbies and we've, we mess up and we, you know, we, it, that's everyday life. Um, so, you know, you can write about, and something else too is, you know, when you're putting your personality into it, I suppose we all have our little quirks or whatever. Um, every so often, um, you can just, you know, I would write, write a rant about something, you know, something I was annoyed about. <laughs> and I remember the first time I did it, it was like, there was some, there was somebody going on strike anyway. And, you know, it was probably a risky thing to do, but I said, fake it anyway. I said, I'm going to write this email. And, um, I forget what it was, but there was somebody I know it was like ESB workers or something threatening to go on strike. They were threatening to go on strike coming up to Christmas. That was it, yeah. So I was saying, you know, I wrote a blog anyway. And I sent out the email and I was heading out for the day. And I noticed there was a couple of unsubscribes. And I was going, oh, my God, what am I after doing, you know? Um, I'm after annoying all these 300, whatever, 300 people. But by the time I got back home that evening, I had about 20 emails from people all agreed with me. Right. And they were saying and then they started having a little rant themselves, you know, in the email. So like, you know, it, that's what, you know, that's what a lot of this is about. It. Don't be afraid to put your personality in there. And and if you have a strong opinion, sometimes it's no harm to, you know, sometimes it's no harm to get it out there. Um, yeah, you might alienate some people, but then you'll draw others closer to you. Yeah. Um, it's like the Neil Prendeville effect. Like, you know, most people in Cork say they don't listen to him. And yet, like he's. He's, he's on the airways for how many years and he's listenership and he's opinionated. 
I'm not saying you have to go down that route, but some people who write content do take that, you know, take a stand every so often. Yeah. Um, and you do always, always find that as well, that even though people will be completely against your opinion, they'll be the ones then interacting and commenting on the post and, and creating a lot of buzz about it. Um, yeah. And you can, you can even see the bigger, like you, if you look at any of the major kind of newspapers now and stuff like that as well, sure they are any of the, the more clickbait type websites, they always try and take an extremely opinionated um, stance yeah. on things to try and almost... I would say probably try and cause controversy as well more than anything. But that's, yeah. that's going to the other extreme then. Uh, yeah, and then you'd see a lot of brands as well, like Nike and stuff uh, lately have really taken stands on things and they've, as a brand, kind of stood out and said, we're supporting athletes who are doing yeah. X, Y, and Z. I know they've done a lot with um, with uh, athletes over the last, last year or so, but a lot of that has been controversial. I mean, Gillette, uh, a while back, they had their controversial um, advert around, you know, be your best man and stuff, or be the best man and this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of brands that are actually taking... Mm. maybe not controversial but they're taking stances on things and that is becoming more popular to, for brands to have almost a persona and opinion of their own as well yeah yeah, yeah. you don't have to do that but it's just an approach some people take and kind of tying in what we we're just talking about there kind of ties in with another question you're asking about titles you know how do you try and come up with titles um because it is important with blogs and emails because if you go onto linkedin or whatever there's a lot of content in there and I found what works well for me over the years is there's two main things. One is just to have the numbers. So like the last, I think I, I, the last blog post that I did was five reasons why now is a really good time to sell. Because I find I, I'm attracted to those myself. You know, you know, another great one at the moment would be like five things I'd love to do when, when we get back, when we, when we come out of this crisis, you know, what are you going to do? Because people are talking about that. And I think that's a really, I haven't done it yet, but I, if somebody's looking for a um, blog title or whatever to write about, why not write about five things that you'd love to do or three things you're planning to do when we get back to some normality and like you will get a response because we're all starting to think that way. So that's something you can write about something topical. Um, and the other thing is curiosity. I think anything you can get in there that has an element of curiosity will grab people's attention. Like, I heard an article and I heard an interview on the radio one morning and I said, I'm going to have to use this as my um, email title. And it was, how quickly can you unfasten a bra? Now, <laughs> that seems a bit rude, right? But the background to it is that, um, like, how can you not open that email? So the background to it actually was a guy down in Skibreen who was going for the Guinness Book of Records. And he was, you know, he was going for the Guinness Book of Records. How many bras can you open in a minute? And he managed, he managed 100, actually believe it or not. What a skill set. Yeah, what a skill set. I hope and he updated his LinkedIn profile accordingly. It's, and it's a record for everything. <laughs> there's actually um, there's a little video on, on YouTube, and the interesting thing is they ran out of women, so they had to go to men, then they started putting bras on men. But anyway, um, but they, I said, like, I heard that in the morning, so I knew I had to write a, a blog that evening, so I said, I have to use this. So it was, that was the title I was writing about, the guy in Skipperine, who's the shop, who's going for the Guinness Book of Records. And the tip then was that how easy it is to get PR. Because like he was on national radio. He was going to get a lot of PR and business from that. So just, you know, that was kind of like, so in terms of titles, I find curiosity. I'm not saying you have to write about open fastening a bra or anything. But um, I find curiosity works well. And numbers is the other thing. Three reasons why, yeah. three tips, five, you know, five reasons why I find they work really well. Um, before we finish up, Neil, there's, um, we're always doing different marketing experiments. And yeah. I was wondering, would you, would you like to chat about your, your hamster box experiment? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> be happy I don't know this at all. I'm dying to find out. This, this, speaking of great stories, this is a fantastic story. <laughs> yeah. so, um, the, um, and uh, again, you know, I'm always looking out for, um, you know, again, this guy, Ali Luke, he's, he's over in England and he's a direct marketer. So he's into posting, you know, posting stuff to people. And I'm sure you might have heard about this shock and awe that you, you send people something that will kind of make it stand out. Like a real kind of standard one used to be you'd send somebody a tea bag and a Kit Kat and a letter. You know, a letter you'd say, take a break when you're, I'll take a break when you're reading my letter. So what, what Ollie started doing was sending hamster boxes, okay? So, like, you get a big box, okay, punch holes in it, 
on all sides and you'd write live hamster inside, you know, <laughs> this side up. So every, you'd something written on every side and got tape on it and the whole lot. So I decided I'm going to try this out anyway. And I sent it off to, I said, I start with a small sample. I sent it off to a few different businesses and I didn't kind of hear anything back. And the next thing I got an email from, from one of them saying, I did oh, I follow up with an email. So I got an email back saying they weren't very happy because the receptionist, <laughs> people thought there was a live hamster in there. And the courier guy was kind of coming in like very nervously. And I know that the receptionist, she didn't quite faint, but I know she might have had to take the afternoon off or something. So it kind of backfired a little bit. And of course, what I realized that time is the holes weren't big enough, so people couldn't look in. So um, uh, that one backfired a little bit. But I must say, though, that I did send a second batch and they got through and I had bigger holes in them. And that actually landed me um, a, quite a big client. And, but there is another story because the next time I tried sending four of them, uh, the, first, the first couple of times I sent them to a courier, the next time I went through on post. So I dropped them down to on post on a Friday and I got a phone call on Monday from my local, the post office saying he got a call from Little Island saying they were refusing to handle them <laughs> because they thought there was live hamsters in there. So, um, but I did get one tip right from somebody saying if I was going to do it again, you could probably do it and do the live hamster box, but put, put another sheet of paper over it so that when, you know, it probably a good chance it would be delivered so they couldn't be able to see the holes. And then when they opened the outer one, they'd be live hamster inside. It's all about standing out. And I think that guy, Ali, in, in England, it worked really well for him in terms of um, standing out. Oh, I love it so much. Such a great story. <laughs> <laughs> So you gotta you gotta gotta give it a go. Actually, you never know, guys. It might be something you'll try at some stage. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, so that's kind of everything, really. I had a few notes and stuff. I think that's most of the things I was going to Brilliant. talk about. Um, um, if people want to find out a bit more about yourself, Neil, or your business, where where is the best place for them to head to? Um, I suppose look Neil at quantum.ie will find me. Quantum.ie is the website. Um, like I, obviously, I don't do. I've done a bit of this, but I don't really do any. Um, I'm happy to give anyone pointers if they want to do email marketing, but um, it's more consulting and masterminds are the, are the core business. So, Brilliant. yeah, and I'm happy to share those. I have 28 ideas for what to write about. If you want to share that with people, that'd be fantastic. Brilliant all together. Neil, thanks yeah. very much. Thanks very much, guys. Great chatting to you. Enjoy that. Bye. That's been, that's okay, been this care. week's episode of the Digital Marketing Scoop.